butterfly populations in the United States have collapsed by more than a fifth in just 20 years. That's according to a first-ever systematic countrywide analysis. Researchers found that butterfly numbers dropped 22 percent between 2000 and 2020. Many individual species saw even steeper declines. The study's authors blamed habitat loss, climate change, and insecticide usage for the decline. Butterflies are important pollinators and indicators of environmental health in the insect world. To shed more light on this, I'm now joined by Elise Zipkin, Director of Ecology, Evolution, and, Behavior, and the Behavior Program at Michigan State University. So, Professor Zipkin, what do these findings tell us about the overall health of North America's ecosystem? Yeah, I think that this is a really unique study because we were able to synthesize data from across the United States. And it really should be a wake up call to everybody out there about the status of insects and ecosystems more broadly. Now, if butterfly and other insect species continue to decline, what would be the likely impact on other sectors of the environment? Yeah, that's a really good question. So insects comprise more mass on the pop on the earth than any other group. And so because of that, they play many different important roles in our ecosystems. So they are responsible for pollinating plants. They are um, a good food source for many other uh, organisms on the planet, including birds. And they're also helping responsible for um, other economic industries. For example, in the southeastern United States, uh, they're responsible for about $100 million uh, of cotton production each year. So if we were to see these continued declines, I would expect that um, we might see other disruptions in ecosystems functions as well. All right. And so what exactly needs to be done to stop the decline across North America? Yeah, I think that's that's important. There are big picture things that need to be done um, in terms of our government making um, decisions to curb things like climate change and habitat loss, and also um, reducing the use of pesticides and ne particularly neonicotinoids, which are a type of insect that's, or sorry, a type of pesticide that's been banned actually in Europe, but um, its widespread use is likely causing some of this mortality. And we don't have to completely ban pesticides, but we can reduce them without really reducing the yield um, on crops such as corn and soybeans. So I think there's kind of low hanging fruit there in terms of um, something that would have a big impact, but also there's a lot that people can do, you know, in, in the United States and everywhere, planting native species in your, in, in you know, in your yards and your regions, and then also even small local areas, protected areas can make a big difference. And now we've talked about a 20% decline so far. Is this one of those climate tipping points that we've been hearing about from environmental scientists for years, or is there a chance that we could actually turn this around in the short term? So I'm always an optimist. I mean, my work is looking at, you know, what's going on with biodiversity. And it would be really sad if we were just documenting declines and couldn't see changes. So I'm I'm very much of the mind that things can be turned around. I mean, insects, unlike you know, mammals, where we produce one individual, a couple individuals a year, and then we put a lot of investment into them, insects can really reproduce rapidly. Under the right conditions, we can see huge booms in populations. So, um, you know, things can turn around for insects in a very short amount of time. So it's definitely not too late. There's still a lot that can be done. Well, I hope you're right. There, that was um, Elise Zipkin, professor for ecology at um, Michigan State University, thank you very much for joining us.